Hey everyone, Reaper here again with another comic book haul. This is comic book haul number 54. I guess this is what I would call my anniversary haul, so to speak. It's a very, very short haul. It's a very humble haul. Nothing too big or extravagant, um, but still a haul nonetheless. Like I was saying, this is my ninth year on YouTube. I can't believe it's been nine years since I decided to join in on the YouTube uh, comic book community. Um, in a previous video, or not, not the previous video, I don't remember if it was the previous video, but in a recent video I was talking about how I first started making comic book videos in June of 2014. Um, those are no longer available. They haven't been available on YouTube in a long time. I, as a matter of fact, I don't even know where they are when it comes to uh, uh, the files. But I should look for them and maybe re-upload them. But they're very old and grainy looking. But um, I first started making videos in t June of 2014 where I just talked about topics. Uh, discussions and then it wasn't until August of 2014 I started the comic book hauls with comic book haul number one I don't know if number two came out in September or in August as well don't remember but that's how I started and I've been here ever since more or less <laughs> so here we have the 54th um, comic book haul so let's get started with it all right and as I just scroll through some of the books here, um, some new additions and some upgrades uh, in this haul, just like any haul. So we will we will start with Men's Adventures number seven, an early Men's Adventures Men's Adventures issue. Um, not bad. This is a nice copy. Well, nice copy. When I say nice copy, I mean like it's probably like a 5.5 five or a 6.0. It's not like a 9, but it's poorly cut, you know. Uh, on the bottom, you can see here there's a lot of white space, and I guess the machine didn't cut the book, or at least the cover so well, because you can see at the top it's got some of the words cut off. But, hey... No big deal to me. I got it for a good price, and I said, yeah, why not? So I wouldn't necessarily say uh, that book, Men's Adventures, from my understanding of it, it's not real. It's a pre-code series, of course, but I wouldn't say it's pre-code horror. There's a couple of um, covers that would be pre-code horror. Now, like this one right here. Again, I don't know if I showed you this one in the last haul. I don't remember. I don't really watch my haul videos. So I, I sometimes keep track of most of the books that I put in these hauls. But since the haul videos are like every other month or something to that effect, I sometimes lose track. So I don't know if I showed you this one. But this is Men's Adventures number 26. Now, this is a very low-grade 1.0 copy. Um, but this has to be one of my absolute favorite pre-code horror outside of EC covers. I just love it. Um, I love morgue or morgue related covers and this is definitely one of them. Beautiful. Uh, like I said, it's a 1.0 copy. It's all complete. It's all there. No resto on it. <laughs> and this is definitely a book that I would love to upgrade to a nice mid-grade copy. But the problem with Meds Adventures number 26 at least is you just don't see them you know it's very hard to find and when you find them either they're low grade like this and you gotta grab them because you just don't see them or they're very very pricey which may prevent some people from actually purchasing them you know because maybe they don't want to spend that much on that type of book and I, I think I mentioned this in another video when it comes to resources and all that stuff uh, for the reasons I mentioned in that video or some other reasons. But again, before I move on to the next book, again, I don't remember if I showed you this in the last haul. If I did, sorry, you get a chance to see it again. But Men's Adventures, really, really stunning uh, pre-code horror cover, more cover. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right. So here I have... Journey into, this is pre-code horror, Journey into Unknown Worlds number 11. Uh, this is a, um, I don't know if, it, I want to say, is it a vampire story? 
but it's definitely on the cover it has a transformation which I know have become popular over the last couple of years when it comes to pre-code. I know Journey into Mystery 16 uh, is a popular pre-code vampire transformation cover where you see half the guy and then you have the creature vampire bat that he's turning into. Um, this is another one. Uh, not as cool or up front it's got way too many stages i think that kind of take away from it but still cool nonetheless so journey into unknown worlds number 11. you know marvel which was atlas at this time they really had a lot of a lot of cool titles that are just forgotten about you know yeah we have we taught you know people comic book uh, superhero collectors such as myself uh, we'll talk about journey into mystery and tales of suspense but those weren't pre-code well at least tales of suspense wasn't but we'll talk about those and we'll mention them we'll mention the issues before the tales of suspense 39 before the journey into mystery 83 before the strange tales 110 as the pre-hero issues but for some of those titles journey into mystery and strange tales part of that they were pre-code horror Journey into Mystery, not just the 16 that I was talking about, uh, they have a ton of great covers, a ton of great uh, horror covers. And so does Strange Tales. So does Strange Tales. But after the code came out in 55, 56, I think it was, then they started moving away from the horror and more of the sci-fi, monster of the week sort of thing before they went into superheroes in the early 1960s. Here's a new book to the collection. I thought that the cover was pretty cool. It's kind of tame. You know, it's not as upfront. It's kind of plain, but I thought it was still cool nonetheless. Suspense number nine. You now, coffin cover, a guy coming out of a coffin. It's not particularly well drawn, but it's still, I think, pretty eerie. And that's the best way I would describe this. Kind of eerie. Not super creepy or grotesque, but kind of. Um, eerie still it's a nice copy well when i say nice copy it's probably like a 5.5 five, something like that and it's one of those books that i don't usually see or usually see out there so that's why i figured oh when i saw it i grabbed it so very very nice okay moving along now here's one that i think this is a nice 4.0 copy the seller sold it as a 4.5 it's not a 4.5 um, and I don't say that to make it seem like, oh, well, I'm just a wonderful grader. No, I'm not saying that to, uh, for that reason. I'm saying it because it's not a 4.5. <laughs> it's not because I'm some very, very by-the-book strict grader, you know, overstreet purist or anything like that. No, it has nothing to do with that. Um, it's just it's because it's not a 4.5. <laughs> but, but. Um, it's still a nice uh, 4.0 copy by a uh, dealer that I do trust, that I, I, I do like his books. He does have good stuff. He really does. I'm not going to mention his name, though. And if I did mention his name, some of you out there would know, oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but here's, I think, a, a, a decently well-known copy. We have Witch's Tales number 24. And it's a morgue cover. And what does it say here? Even the dead, even the dead feared the Undertaker. I read this story. It was pretty cool. I mean, I, I'll say this, and I've said this before. A lot of the pre-code horror um, outside EC, pre-code horror stories are not as good as EC. And that's just my opinion. Uh, some people out there may say, no, I think you're wrong on that. That's fine. But I don't think they're as good or as memorable as the EC stories, or as the pre-code Atlas or whatever Harvey covers. The stories are not as memorable as the covers. And I think, um, but this one was pretty good, I thought. And so was Men's Adventures 26, the one I showed you before, the Morgan. That's pretty good. It's not EC good. It's not EC memorable. doesn't have that twist ending. Well, uh, some of them do. Actually, some. I take that back. Sorry, I take that back. They do have some of the twist endings, but they're not that great. But they're not bad either okay so here we another look at witches tales what was this number uh 24. yeah like i said i try to collect morgue covers and uh, or anything associated with a morgue and there we have it 
although the cover doesn't accurately portray the story. Now, we got some upgrades, everybody. We got four upgrades on the way, plus a new book to the collection, which will end the video. I got these two from my friend Mike. They are upgrades of two Vault of Horror books. This one I've been looking for for a while. Now, I had a, um, a 4.5 copy, which was a very nice copy. It looked good. It could use a press and might press out to a 5.0, but don't bet on that. But a very... Very nice, 4.5. I, I really liked it, but I always wanted to get something a little higher. As I started moving away from the 4.0s, remember my goal was to get at least 4.0 on most of the books, with the exception of, with a few exceptions. Um, then once I did that, and I started dabbling in the 5.5s five and the 6s and all that stuff. So here, long story short, too late is a 7.0, or at least I think it's a 7.0. At least Mike says it's a 7.0, which I agree. I don't know if I'm going to have it graded, but it is absolutely a stunning, stunning cover and a stunning copy. We have Vault of Horror number 29. I think this is one of the, the underrated covers in the Vault of Horror run. I think when people talk about or think about the Vault of Horror, they think about the Christmas cover. They may think about the, the hand, or the arm rather, on the subway cover. And you should, because those are classic covers. Uh, what other covers are usually memorable? I think the, I would even say the, oh absolutely, the werewolf cover, number 17. That's, I have a 4.0, I want to get, try to get a 6.0 on that one. 5.5, five, 6.0, that's great. That's a memorable cover. The Wishing Well cover, which is 18, that's a memorable cover. But I think this, and there are a few others too. I think this one gets lost in the shuffle, and I don't know why. Uh, Mary Severin definitely chose, you know, a bunch of funky covers, uh, colors, excuse me, for this guy's suit. Uh, I haven't seen a suit that color on an EC uh, book, from my memory, cover or inside story. But look at the zombies; they're really cool looking, really cool looking. Um, but this is just an absolutely stunning cover, a uh, stunning copy. Um, I love it, and it's one that I've been trying to get for a while. I passed on a few six O's over the last year because I didn't agree with the price. So you know, it's, it's just I just didn't agree with the price that the guy had on it, <laughs> and that's why I didn't buy it. But when Mike came out with his seven O, which was a way better price than some of the six O's I saw. Um, as per mention, the aforementioned six O's or six O, um, I had to get it. Just had to get it. All right, now here's another one that you've seen on this channel many times. I've had this this book right here. I think across any genre, pre-code horror, uh, superhero books, whatever. This is the one book that I've had multiple copies of over the last five, six, seven years. All right. And it's another upgrade. And I think in the last haul, I upgraded it, and then I upgraded it again to this one. I, I know, I'm, I'm just crazy. Crazy with, you know, with, the, with this book. Here we have a nice 6.5 copy of Vault of Horror number 13. As you saw in the last video, I upgraded to a 5.5, which was a very nice copy. Very good copy to have. You know, Vault of Horror 13, and, 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 I, and I would even, obviously the 12, which is the first issue, and even 14, to be quite honest. I think I, I showcased my upgraded copy of 14 in that video too, which I upgraded to a 6.0. But Vault of Horror 13, it's not that easy to find. It really isn't. And again, neither is 12 or uh, 14. But 13 is hard to get, especially over a 4.0 copy. I uh, Believe me, I know. I've been trying to get a, four po a better than 4.0 for a while. And um, I told you the story last video. I'll just quickly go over it again. Um, I had a 2.5 copy, sold it, and I wound up getting a 3.5 copy. I think it was well over a year ago. It could have been two years ago for all I know. I don't remember. Uh, it might have been a, over a year and a half ago. But that's not important. But no, I think it was a year ago, a year and a half ago. Anyway, I upgraded to a 3.5 copy. I was like, oh, okay, it's much better than my 2.5. It looked a lot better done right so then later in the year 
So that was my second copy. Later in the year, October, Heritage had a nice 5.5 copy for sale. 5.5, it might have been a 6.0, I don't remember, but I think it was a 5.5. So anyway, I won it, I paid a, a, a you know, hefty price for it, but it was okay, you know, when you add that buyer's premium and all that. And I got it and it looked absolutely stunning and it was too good to be true. It was restored. Yes, restored. I did not spend all that money to get a restored copy. No, thank you. And the listing did not say it was restored. I thought for a moment, oh, maybe there was something I missed because, you know, sometimes that happens. Oh, did I not read the apparent because the apparent word somewhere in that listing? Because, you know, a heritage will put down uh, when something is restored or something this or that. Didn't have it. Didn't have it. And when I opened it, it said on the back, the backboard, apparent. And it had a bunch of things. I forget what it was what it said uh, but one of the uh, forget all the things but i do know it said tear seals among among the rest and it had a glossy cover it, the, the cover was re-glossed it had just a really beautiful shine to it and i could tell it was re-glossed because i know my hulk one is re-glossed it's a restored copy what can you do um no big deal but when i saw the tear seals i just went i said to myself because I was like sort of in denial. I was sort of saying to myself, oh, well, maybe they just use another a board from another comic, right? And I went looking on the book to see if there were any tears, just to confirm. And I found a few tears, and I found a tear on the back cover, and I tried to move my finger through it to see if the cover actually is torn, and I clearly saw the tear, and it didn't move. It was indeed glued. Now you might say, well, what's the big deal with that? You know, that could possibly be fixed. And the other tear said there was another tear seal, seal I found that could be fixed. Well, I didn't pay for that. You know, I didn't pay a non-restored price to have the book come restored and have it unrestored, to have it scraped and have the grade that I thought I was originally going to get go down. I didn't pay for that. That's why I returned it. it. Believe me, it was a hard thing to do. It really was because I was just in love with that book so much. So I returned it. So it didn't stay that long in the house. I got a full refund. Then I think they relisted it up months later, this time as a restored copy. Yeah, because I remember it popped up. I said, that's my book. Or was my book. <laughs> so um, I... So, so anyway, sorry, sorry to had a brain freeze for a moment of, of sorts, uh, brain fog. So last haul around in May, the 5.5 copy popped up and I bought it very happy. So that was the fourth copy that I've owned of it. But then I saw this one for sale, 6.5 copy. And I just said, you know what? I got to get it. I just got to get it. And it's an absolutely beautiful 6.5 copy. I'm absolutely in love with it. So then you might be asking, just one last look at it. So then you might be asking, so if you see a 7.5, are you going to upgrade it? Yeah. If I see a 7.5 copy of that book or any book that needs an upgrade and I think that the price is good, I will upgrade it. The price has to be right. Never say never. I, I like to go back to that video. One of my favorite videos I made from last year was talking about, you know, upgrading and how I approach upgrading. And I'll say it, I said it before and I'll say it again. Upgrading is like collecting these books is like a ladder. You keep climbing. Keep climbing. If you're at the 6.5 part of the ladder and then you see a 7.5 that you feel is attainable financially, think is good, and then if you decide you want to get rid of your copy to help make it even more attainable, Climb up? Why not? Right? Why not? Don't drive yourself crazy with it, but if it's something that you can do, why not? All right. Speaking of upgrades and from the same seller, um, I tried to make a couple more uh, corrections. Um, as you know, I'm still trying to get an X-Men number one. I don't know if that's going to happen this year, but we'll see what happens. But it's definitely going to happen. So I went through my, I'm still going through my X-Men collection. My, I want to do a video on it, but my X-Men's uh, Silver Age collection is a nice collection. 
you know, yes, the number one is a 3.0, but all the other books are very, very nice. And there were a few 4.0s that I started to pick at and I wanted to improve. Um, there's still like maybe two or three 4.5s, maybe 5.0s. I think I want to get six fives on. But anyway, one of the single digits, one of the single digit uh, books was X-Men number six that I had a 4.0. I said, you know what, even though it's fine, 4.0 is good, I think I could do a little bit better. So I upgraded to this nice 6.5 copy. Very happy to do so. Very happy to do so. Yeah, um, it was one of the single digit X-Men's outside the number one that I felt I could get a much better copy. And, you know, you go from 4 to 5 is no big deal. But when you go from 4 to 6.5 or 7.0 or 6.0, then it starts to become a bigger financial responsibility. But, again, it was a good price, so I went for it. And the last upgrade, not the last book, I have one more book. And oh, the, these two books, they all come from Mike. Same seller. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Excuse me. This one doesn't come from Mike. I, he was selling one like this. I got it confused. This comes from... Uh, the, gen the guy that I bought my 5.5 five Vault of Horror from, actually. But anyway, here's another upgrade. Another single-digit X-Men. X-Men number 5. I upgraded to a nice 7.5 copy. Um, like the 4, like the 6, excuse me. I think my, 4 point, uh, my, my number 4 is like a 5.0. I'm going to see if I get that graded. We'll see if I'm right. And if I'm not right... And it's lower, it'll be upgraded. Uh, but I think it's a 5.0. But anyway, my five, my number five was a five, but was a 4.0. It was a 4.0. And I said, even though again it looked nice, it really did, but I felt that I could do a little bit better. And I did. I saw this 7.5 pop up. I think I paid um, what usually six O's are going for. And I said, wow, that's a good price for a 7.5. I'm going to go for it. And here it is. It's a stunning copy. It's a very, I know you can't see it with the glare and all that stuff, but it's an absolute uh, stunning copy. And now for the last book of this haul. I know I've been rambling on and on. This one comes from Mike. And it is a pre-code horror. And it's one of my favorite pre-code horror covers because it's a morgue cover. There's a few other ones that I want to get. Um, that are new to the, not just upgrading Men's Adventures 26, new to the collection. Well, here we have Mystery Tales number 9. A beautiful morgue cover. It's almost like the Men's Adventures 26, except with Men's 26, there are multiple skeletons coming out of the drawers in the morgue. Here we have one guy on the table and one guy coming out of the, out of the drawer. Beautiful. Nice 5.5 five copy. Okay, so this is not something that I'm looking to upgrade, but if I saw a 6.5 that I thought was a good price, well, then this one's going to have to go and I'll have to upgrade it. But it's a very nice, I'm glad I was able to get a nice mid grade copy of uh, Mystery Tales. Man, what's it called? Man in the Morgue. I wish I could say I read this, but I'm not going to because I'm not going to crack the slab out. All right. So that is my anniversary humble comic book haul number 54. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that um, you enjoyed most of my videos, if not all my videos over these last nine years. Um, you know, things sometimes change when it comes to technology. Things change when it comes to uh, opinions. Things change when it comes to collecting habits. That's to be expected over such a long period of time. I think anybody would agree that probably some of your collectings has, has changed certainly over the years as mine has and attitudes have changed too. So I'm hoping that you know that you're enjoying the videos and you continue to stick with me as I release videos. Sometimes I'll go on a schedule and sometimes I don't. It depends on because I'm always very busy uh, when it comes to work and all that stuff. So uh, Sometimes I just don't have the time or the thought process to come up with something. But I do have a couple of new videos coming out on the horizon. I'm going to show you my pre-code non-EC horror collection. 
and then we'll probably do another one maybe next year and to see how it's grown or how it's upgraded and all that stuff one of those things that you can track throughout the throughout time and i'm going to do like i said i'm going to do an x-men video where i just highlight some books from the x-men run that you know just to have some stories to talk about and and of course a couple other videos along the way so i hope you tune in i hope you enjoy and i hope you all stay safe take care everybody